Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you very much for joining our online conference uh, towards a circular bioeconomy volatile fatty acid platform for bio waste recycling. Um, it will be a very long, long day. Let's see. We will have very interesting, um, yeah, presentations from different uh, actors along the value chain, which is important. For the for the bioeconomy, uh, my name is Thomas Dietrich. I will guide you through the to the through the conference uh, as moderator, and uh, that you have also an um, uh, idea. We have uh, yeah more than more than eighty uh, uh, um, yeah registrations for this conference, uh, and I took only some out of it. So. Maybe somebody is not there uh, seen, but um, we have uh, yeah registrations from from all over the world, as you can see here, which are joining us. Um, we will have, as I said already, presentations today from from a lot of uh, people from from the project Volatile, but they are all actors, uh, different uh, sections or steps of the bioeconomy, um, research institutions, uh, small small uh, uh, companies, technology providers, waste treatment facilities, biotechnology experts, uh, yeah, fermentation experts, and so on, which will give you an overview about the Volatile project, but also about uh, information in general about the circular bioeconomy, where where we are yeah working on all. Um, I will go through. So we will start um, first afterwards uh, with the presentation on biorefineries in the bioeconomy by Jochen Michels. Then uh, Thies Mocking from Twense will give us a, a presentation about feedstocks because one thing is uh, to implement a biorefinery. The other question is. Do we have enough feedstocks available for this? Then, of course, the bioeconomy is also affected by, by other aspects like the market and the legal um, legislation. So there Adelheid Wiedemann from Wiedemann GmbH will uh, give us a presentation too. Then afterwards, I will give you a presentation about or general overview about the volatile project. And then we will go in detail about the volatile fatty acid platform by Philip Felge, then uh, production of biopolyesters from wastes by uh, Bruno Sommer Ferreira, and cultivation of oligenous yeast for single cell oil production by Markus Neureiter. Then, after the lunch break, then we will have a short break of one hour. Then we will have uh, um, a presentation about omega free fatty acids uh, produced by microalgae using volatile fatty acids by Vangelis Tupakas from NDOA in Grecia and Greece. And then, of course, beside the biotechnological uh, 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 processes which we will need to implement the biorefinery or circular bioeconomy, also uh, other aspects are important, like as we have heard in the morning, then about legislation. Uh, also, standardization is an important aspect. There, Jochen Michels will give us a uh, um, a presentation to a SEN workshop agreement, which we prefer in the context of volatile, and he will be supported by Christian Grunewald from Dean. Then we will, of course, bioeconomy means not per se that it is environmentally friendly. So there also Vasya uh, Okinomopolo from NTOA will give us uh, um, yeah, some insights about the performance of our new processes developed. And then uh, everybody thinks bio, bioeconomy. Uh, also in the bioeconomy, we need uh, software solutions. There, Sia Vash Farak Bakash from EV Elvo. Sorry, Sia, that I couldn't uh, pronounce it very well. Uh, we'll speak about, uh, yeah, let's say agent-based modeling in the context of the bioeconomy. And in the end, in the afternoon, we will have a round table with Maria Aline. She is from Idelix Environment, it's a waste treatment company from Belgium. With Philip Felge, he's from Organic Waste Systems in Belgium. It's a technology provider for anaerobic digestion and disclosure of development. And then Bruno Sommer from Biotrend, it's an expert company in the development of biotechnological process processes, also 
fermentation processes for the production of different types of uh, added value compounds. So to, to have there some, some general guidelines, also please mute your micros. Um, I can do it also from my side, but a principle, uh, please mute your micros. And then if you have questions, you can ask them continuously. Uh, you should have there um, a question section in your, um, in your screen. There you can uh, write questions uh, down also during the presentation. So I will, after every presentation, we will have a short round of some, some questions uh, which we will um, yeah, give to the, to the panelists, which are the presenters. And then, uh, yeah, we, we uh, yeah, then we, we can, uh, uh, yeah, forward them to everyone. Okay, then, yeah, thanks for your participation. I hope it will be a quite interesting day today. Um, and I will give then directly the word or sharing the screen uh, for, for Jochen. Uh, Jochen is, uh, yeah, he's working at Dishima. Um, it's uh, yeah, the, the um, association for the chemical and biotechnological industry in, 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 in Germany. He will, he will give there for sure also a short uh, introduction to Dishima. He has more than 25 years experiences. Also he works in project coordination management and all the time in the field of renewable resources and biorefineries. So I will give now the floor to uh, our colleague um, uh, Jochen. One moment. Jochen, there you are. One moment. I'm here. Wait, wait, wait. Now, now you, you should be, Jochen, now you should uh, be able to share your screen. Yeah. Yeah. In principle, can you see my screen? I think this is the more important question in this morning and in the entire day. Everybody will ask. Yes, can you see my screen? Uh, I can see it. Yeah, great. So, That's just so I suppose, I suppose okay. also I attended. Uh, yes, we can see it, your hand. Yeah, thanks. Then, I, then I'm going to start. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much um, for, for introduction, Thomas. Um, I'm not well prepared to introduce Dehima a little bit, um, oh. um, but but maybe maybe in, in, in a nutshell, uh, Dehima is a is a scientific organization um, uh, uh, in um, in Germany, and uh, we are um, active in the field of chemical industry and and biotechnology. Um, we all more, all also have some um, some actions in the field of, of resources and, and and circular economy, and uh, maybe most of you may know Dehima from its very famous fair, the Achima, which is held any three years, every three years in in uh, in, in Frankfurt. This is the, the 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 we say the worldwide biggest fair on chemical technology and biotechnology. Um, uh, in, in, in Europe. Yeah, good. Um, but let's start with, with my talk, biorefineries <clears throat> in the bioeconomy. This, this presentation will, will prepare a little bit the ground for what you will hear the entire day um, to give uh, a, a, a short uh, uh, yeah, tool to, to, um, um, to um, yeah, to, to get you the, in, in, in the situation that you can, can see in which framework are biorefineries in the bioeconomy uh, are, are situated. Um, and so firstly, let's, let's talk a little bit about the bioeconomy. This, this sheet is, or this information is taken uh, from the action plan, which was um, published in 2018. Um, by the European uh, Commission, the European way to use natural resources. And, and there is also mentioned that bioeconomy covers all sectors and systems that rely on biological resources. And this also includes organic waste, and that's why we are here. Um, the, the bioeconomy includes anything, and this makes it very, um, very tricky and very um, uh, uh, complex uh, um, 
to to define what what, what kind of biorefineries can can use these uh, can serve these ecosystems. So we we have land and and in marine resources we have all the primary production sectors and but also um, sectors from from industry and, and economic uh, which are using biological resources and which maybe produce feedstocks for for um, um, uh, for waste-based um, biorefineries and everyone is talking about a circular economy and and um, the, the 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 bioeconomy has has some problems to define itself as as a circular bioeconomy or is it a biocircular economy or was it what is it and I think um, the term bioeconomy includes uh, uh, it has uh, this the, the term circular because um, to become or to be sustainable um, uh, also bioeconomy needs to be circular. Okay, so we have different sectors, as I mentioned before. We have we have from the primary sector, the first generation feedstocks, the sugar beets, and and um, most promising for for several years are algae as as sources for um, for biomass and also for ingredients. Wood resources uh, can can be used as 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 a second generation feedstock. Um, not to not to compete with with uh, with food and feed, and on the other hand, we have this, the waste sector. Here is mentioned fish waste and biological waste, and all of these these feedstocks go, go through different kind of biorefineries to produce, in first instance, chemicals, and these chemicals are used uh, for different sectors for cosmetics, for textiles, maybe car dash bores plastics, oils, and pharmaceuticals. But in the first instance, these are chemicals uh, um, as intermediates to become materials. Um, again, from the action plan, there are three priorities. So the European bioeconomy strategy means strengthen and scale up the bio-based sectors. So this means, okay, this is, this is clear, this is non-technical, unlocking investments and market, market, deploying innovative solutions and, and developing substitutes to plastics. Um, yeah, this is a term which is, which is highlighted uh, in, in, in the action plan because of its uh, very crucial position um, that plastics uh, are non-degradable uh, in the marine environments. Okay, but the second priority is deploy local bioeconomies. So you need to get sustainable food and farming systems, sustainable forestry, and uh, more diversified revenues for farmers, foresters, uh, and, 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 and fishermen. And sustainability in this uh, context means that you don't have to produce waste. So you have to use entire fractions of, of, all, um, of all the feedstock you are using. And you need priority three, of course, to understand the, <coughs> the ecological boundaries of a bioeconomy. Um, sorry for a second. <coughs> um, this means um, that you have to to know how 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 can you stress uh, the bioeconomy to to retain sustainable for future developments. So and and putting anything together, there's there's one sentence mentioned in in priority one. And this means facilitate the development of new sustainable biorefineries. And this is on top of these priorities, in, 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 in my opinion. So, but what, what is a biorefinery? Um, this is a very, very long lasting discussion, um, mainly in the early uh, uh, years of, of this the century. And, and um, this uh, definition here, comes uh, from from the German government. From this is the roadmap biorefineries, and um, biorefineries has to be uh, as explicitly integrated, multi multifunctional. So it, it means it is it is not um, maybe not really a single facility. It could also be a cluster of several. Uh, facilities and and the, the common ground is that they use this biomass as diverse source of raw materials. That means um, in in a very optimal condition they can use different feedstocks 
without producing waste. Yeah, and um, they have to produce sustainable uh, in a sustainable way a spectrum of different intermediates and this covers uh, chemicals materials but also bioenergy or biofuels um, and but it use it has to be used uh, in, in a way that all of the oral material components are used and no waste is produced um, and in, in Germany it was very special the way we had long discussion on um, what is about food and feed as co-products, so um, we integrated it uh, um, uh, finally, um, but there is a high priority that this facility, the bio uh, refinery, should not produce food and feed in first instance. Uh, in first instance, they should produce platform chemicals to, 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 to serve the chemical industry. And, and uh, to get an imagination which platform chemicals uh, uh, are necessary, let's have a look on the pet petrol-based platform chemicals uh, which are uh, used currently. And, and, and this is a, a sheet um, which, which um, sorts all these platform chemicals by its uh, carbon length. So the, the C1 compounds, methane, methanol, and carbon dioxide, are used and on the on the C2 level it, it is mainly ethylene which is which is used and all of you know uh, polyethylene as a, as a, as a um, poly polymer which is which is used uh, yeah in, in daily life um, this is also true for polypropylene the C3 uh, chain uh, of carbon so propylene is also a, a very famous um, um, platform chemical for the chemical industry. On the C4 level, which is mostly butane and isobutane and butadiene, um, which is used in the in the in the in the gum factories, um, so tires and so will be produced um, from the C4 platform chemicals. Yeah, and on the aromatic side, which is also uh, in the naphtha fraction, which is used, this is benzene, toluene, xylene. Uh, um, um, maybe you, you know them from um, um, uh, they are used as, as substitutes in as additives sorry in, 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 in different fuels for example and, and also in, in, in several um, um, yeah other uh, 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 concepts um, mainly, mainly they are used really in the fuel industry, and, and often you have you have uh, the, the ground spilled with these kinds of of aromatics. So, but have a look on on the on the bio based side. So, what what can the bio based side serve to platform chemicals? And this is mainly a difference. So, um, the bio based side can serve methane and carbon dioxide dioxide mainly. Uh, on the ethylene side, uh, on the C2 level, it is ethanol or maybe acetic acid, uh, and the substitute for propylene could be lactic acid or, or glycerin. Um, and on the C4 level, it is uh, butanol or succinic acid. Um, yeah, and the only source for, for aromatics uh, um, in the bio based world is, is lignin and uh, lignin. Is is a an, an very complex three-dimensional polymer um, where where also aromatics are included, but it is very hard to to get the aromatic compounds out of lignin. It is it is hard to to fractionate there. Um, but let's let's have a look on on um, what is a, what is a platform chemical in general for the chemical industry, and in in, in principle it means that the a platform chemical uh, is the is is the root of a chemical family tree. So, and here is is a, a sketch, very raw sketch on what uh, is the chemical industry doing with ethylene, and it is, as I said, mainly producing polyethylene out of it, but also uh, PVC can be produced, acetylene, ethylene oxide, and and glycol esters, then ethylene diamine. And also, it is part of, of polystyrene. Um, so, but but how can it now? How can a, a chemical family tree 
been been uh, supported by bio-based um, platform chemicals. And in, in, in this sketch, it is, it is very easy. In others, it is very more complex. There is a way to reduce ethanol for ethylene, and ethanol can be produced by sugar. So this is a very crude example on how to serve a chemical industry with bio-based um, platform chemicals, yeah, to serve their common roots. Um, there, as I said, they're more complex, but this is out of the frame of this um, this talk. So um, the next is that I would like to introduce in several concepts of biorefineries, which are serving the chemical industries along with some examples of it. And therefore, I um, give you a, a, a short introduction on how these um, these sketches uh, are. Uh, 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 are meant so so you have um, in the first instance in green every time you will find the the feedstocks or processes are in in gray um, the, the platform is in, in in ochre and and then you have three kind of products um, the material product the energy project and the co-product which are also Farb coded here, and and um, the color of the of the arrows means that the green colors means it's a so-called primary refinery, and uh, the the gray ones are, are um, secondary refinery steps. Steps. Um, this is um, of this belongs to all pla uh, um, conversion and refinery steps after generation of the platform. So. Um, after this schematic representation, let's have a look on the classification of these elements. So, which kind of feedstocks can be used? And uh, it's it's a huge fraction. What is what today is used is the agricultural biomass, so first generation, so oil crop, starch crop, sugar, maybe also second ger generation. This is grasses, wood, and woody biomass. You can use aquatic bio biomass like algae or even residual or waste biomass. So agricultural forestry residues, uh, biogenic residual materials from processing or even waste material. Um, the, the, the platform uh, which is built out of it, this is um, the fraction, uh, are mainly fractionated and deep polymerized um, biomass. So you have low molecular weight carbohydrates or um, proteins, plant fibers, oils, um, and depending on, on the processes you use, also pyrolysis oil um, or some gas uh, to, to tell, to, to, to mention just two, which are not, not bio-based. And um, yeah, the products are, of course, in first instance, are, are chemicals and um, some materials, feedstuff and feedstock only as co-product, as I said. And, and on the other hand, you have um, bioenergy. And um, to, to mention all the processes, meaning uh, a biorefinery is, is not necessarily using um, biotechnology, biotechnological processes. It is mainly using physical and mechanical processes, thermochemical processes, and chemical processes as well. And th there are some examples which are also using biotechnological processes, but these are uh, often only steps, single steps, individual steps in the in the process chain. Okay, let's have a look on on the types of biorefineries um, we know about, and um, we have different, or I can can separate them into different generations. So first generation means um, it, it is a biorefinery um, based on the bottom up approach. Um, and I uh, will will um, explain this in detail. Detail, and it is often using uh, food crops. And examples for this kind of biorefinery is a, a, a sugar or starch biorefinery or a vegetable oil biorefinery. And uh, a second generation one, which is um, using second generation feedstock as well. And, and often um, they are constructed in a top-down approach and are usually using non-food crops. This is true for lignocellulosic biorefinery, but also for green biorefineries and synthesis gas biorefineries. And the, the third generations, 
um, um, are dealing with other bioresources and, and depending on application which are uh, uh, constructed bottom up or even top down. And um, um, this is also this is true for residual based biorefinery concepts and also for, for algae based biorefinery concepts. Good, but let's start with the first generation. And the, the first example is a, a sugar factory. Um, and and uh, here you, you can see the depiction of, of a process diagram of, a, of a, a sugar factory, meaning starting by sugar beet, you, you extract the beets and get the, the syrup, and, and the syrup will be crystallized to get the sucrose out of it. And the byproduct is, is feed, uh, molasses, and, and, and cuttings from, from the sugar beet. So this is, this is a normal sugar factory, and um, you need to extend um, the processes and to add some, some value chains to become more sustainable. That means you can, you can also add maybe a fermentation at plant, an ethanol plant, plant um, to a sugar um, um, factory. This, this has often been happened in the past, so you can use the sugar beet instead of crystallize it to sucrose. You, you, can, you can ferment it um, to, to ethanol uh, and producing also in addition some feed from the, from the vinasa. So, and to, to make a full scale biorefinery out of it, um, you can use uh, the, the sucrose uh, for preparing uh, some more chemicals or, or some more carbohydrates in this case, um, like fructose, glucose, or gluconic acid. Than my chemical processes. So, in, um, in an example of such kind of of uh, biorefinery, not based on on, on 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 sugar, but based on on starch. This is the the Cargill biorefinery campus uh, located in Blair, Nebraska. Um, this they have started with a with a um, with a starch um, um, processing. Uh, um, a unit uh, making starch from corn, <clears throat> um, and and it is a huge site in Blair, and and some companies uh, have have settled uh, next to this uh, starch factory to get to get the the, the 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 glucose and and the maltose out of it to ferment it to further different um, platform not platform chemicals but products. Yeah, and and um, on 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 the side of of uh, of Blair, Nebraska, there are companies like uh, Evonik. They are producing the lysine. Um, there is uh, NatureWorks uh, producing polylactide and so on. So <clears throat> they are really uh, it's a it's a really huge site now, and they call them safe self as I said a biorefinery campus. <coughs> so. Um, going on, looking at, at the vegetable oils, um, starting maybe from a biodiesel plant. The biodiesel plant is taking rapeseed oil, um, transesterificate it to biodiesel, and the co-product is glycerol in this case. So um, um, this is the problem of all biodiesel plants in, uh, in, in these days. They have huge amounts of glycerol, and this has to be, be, be um, marketed as, as well. Um, uh, to become uh, sustainable, so uh, but you can extend a vegetable, uh, a biodiesel plant, if you start not directly with rapeseed oil, by but if you add a, an oil mill to it, yeah. So or, and and then you start with maybe rapeseed and extract the rapeseed, then you have some 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 feed um, out of it, and then you get to the rapeseed oil, and but you have the same problem what to do with the glycerol. And, and, and to make a, a vegetable oil biorefinery out of it, you, you, you have several options. Maybe you can use the rapeseed oil and hydrolyze it into fatty acids and, and, and glycerol as, as well, and then um, modificate it something to get some, some lubricants, propandiol or triacetine out of it. So and then you have a full covered and uh, bottom, uh, yeah, bottom up um, uh, vegetable oil biorefinery. An example for, for this, it's uh, in, in my personal opinion, very, very famous. It is the Matricia biorefinery from the EU BBI project first to run. 
um, they use thistle oil or thistles and, and uh, produce plant oil out of it and uh, uh, did some chemical, uh, do some chemical work on it by hydroxylation oxidative cleavage and get a huge amount of, of, of different um, chemicals out of it, uh, which are, are used in the chemical industry as, as well, or, or directly uh, on the field. So um, um, they have a, a very nice web page, so you can read there what they are all doing with this, um, um, with these different uh, product streams. Okay, um, coming to the uh, second generation, that, which uh, based on, based on their complexity by often by a top-down approach and using non-food crops and, and we start with a lignocellulosic biorefinery. So this is um, a pilot plant we have here in, in, in Germany. Um, it, is, it is located at Fraunhofer in, in, in Leuna and they use beech wood and have an, a, a very special piping process <clears throat> called the organosolve piping. Um, the advantage of the organosolve piping, <coughs> uh, I don't know what it is, I'm sorry. Um, the advantage of organosolve piping is that it produces a, a sulfate-free lignin. And so the lignin can also be processed to further um, um, products. Um, on on uh, the, the, the main um, um, value chain of a, of a um, lignocellulosic biorefinery is the sugar fraction, um, which uh, is saccharified and, and, and then purified to glucose. But um, this is the reason why uh, such kind of biorefinery is, is produced top down and not bottom up is because not one single value chain is 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 worth to to create such a refinery. It is you you cannot um, get an economic business case out of just one one of these value chains. You need to to um, uh, exploit all um, of these uh, uh, streams. So you also need an an uh, business case for the produced lignin and and the C5 sugars. And especially in the case of, of lignin, it is, it is very hard, still hard to define in market what to do with this lignin. There are several applications available, but um, it is, it is um, um, it's especially hard to define in the first instance a price for the, for the produced lignin because you don't really have the market for that. So um, um, our second, Example here is a lignocellulosic biorefinery in, uh, in Straubing. This is uh, an, an, um, an site from, from Clariant and the, the process is called sand liquid. So they use um, straw as raw material and hydrolyze it uh, by, by hydrothermal, no, that's not true, they, they fractionate it, not fraction, they, they um, disintegrate it by hydrothermal pulping, sorry. And they get one fraction, cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin, which is not separated, but uh, immediately saccharified. And so they produce C5 and C6 sugars out of it, which are directly fermented <coughs> to ethanol. And, uh, and in, in a very late stage, uh, the lignin is, is separated and also used, um, uh, then also used for, for process energy. The stillage which comes out of it cannot be used um, as, a, as, as a feed, uh, um, as a feedstock, for, as, a, as a deer feedstock, um, um, like, like a, a sugar beet biorefinery. Um, so they use it to pro produce biogas out of it. And yeah, the, the, the best thing, or the, 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 the characteristic of this kind of biorefinery it is very autark, so it produces its own enzymes and, and its own yeast for, for the fermentation. Um, so it is, is a really nice project. And, and now it is also running in, in European BBI project called Lignoflag, and you also find the web page out of it. Um, yeah, um, then there are different kinds of uh, synthesis gas biorefinery, also using straw. Um, this straw uh, is also only uh, pyrolyzed uh, to an oil and then 
and in uh, pyrolysis oil and in, 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 in coke. And this is in the pyrolysis oil and the coal is co coke is mix, mixed up to a slurry. Uh, and then afterwards gasified, you get a synthesis gas out of it. And in that special process, you are producing methanol and DME from the synthesis gas um, to create some platform chemicals or even fuels out of it, the bionic plant and also in Germany. So these are different kinds. And also this is a, a, a top down. So it is, um, uh, it is, it is engineered uh, uh, completely before built. So uh, coming to the third generation, this, um, as, as I said, depending on, on the application, have bottom up and top down approach examples, and they use other bioresources. And um, one example of this residual uh, um, based biorefining concept starts with a biogas plant. So you, you can use biogenic residues, waste, green biomass, and ha have a, the anaerobic digestion producing biogas. Um, you get also digestate as fertilizer out of it, and the biogas is, is, is uh, um, converted to, to energy, to, to electricity and heat um, um, by, by a combined heat and, 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 and power unit. So, but this is not really a, a biorefinery to, to um, become a biorefinery, uh, several other steps are necessary. Maybe you can you can uh, make a gas washing out of a biogas, so separating carbon dioxide from methane, and and use the methane separately. And then you can use the the the, the methane to do some some fermentation to produce also chemicals and and fuels. So and then you have an an entire biorefinery. So into to to get now. Um, the link to to the topic of of our day an alternative um, um uh, biorefinery concept is is uh, interfering early in the anaerobic digestion process and and getting the the volatile fatty acids out of it and and uh, do some upscaling by further fermentations um of the vfa and and this concept is what you are introduced today as a very um, yeah, promising biorefinery concept of the future. And um, yeah, this is the, the end of my talk. Many thanks for your attention. And uh, yeah, Thomas, I'm, I'm open for questions to everyone. Any questions there? Jochen, maybe share also uh, a moment your your webcam. Yes, on yes, the sharing. Yes. Because uh, yeah, I I had the problem that uh, the hi <laughs> I found it. Lisa was giving me some instructions how to do it. So, um, are there any questions for for Jochen? Or of course we can have them also later on because uh, I I will forward them to Jochen. No, Jochen, in the moment there are not. But uh, okay. as you will be there in the, in the in, I'm here uh, all day. So if somebody has more questions uh, about biorefineries in, in general, um, yeah. Ah, there, there's somebody. Wait, let me short check. Um, dun, dun, dun. Somebody was asking. Somebody. There's so many. And cannot find it. Yeah, Thomas, I, th I think you should go on in the program. So, so, so now, uh, as a please, if you have a question, write it in the question section because then I then I have it easier because there are so many uh, people in the conference that going through all the. I have seen a hand, but it disappeared. So. Um, um yeah so please ah here uh, um Jochen, there's a question from 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 Piotr. he's from pci uh how do you purify the lignosulfate i didn't understand your question i'm sorry 
how do you purify the lignosulfate? We, we don't have like lignosulfates. But we have we have in one of your in one of the presentations, I suppose. Uh, one of the 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 biorefineries, not in volatile in, 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 in yeah yeah I know I know I know I know I know I know um, I, I go back to the presentation you you may see it no you don't see it yeah okay yeah, now I can see the presentation yeah. so I think it's that one yeah so in in this case lig lignin is just precipitated. Um, during the organosulf pulping, there is no sulfur lignin uh, or lignin sulfonate produced. It is just lignin, and it, it is precipitated. Um, um, the precipitation step means, um, based on the organosulf pulping, the organosulf pulping is 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 a pulping process using a 50% water ethanol solution for for this pulping process. And if you dilute um, uh, the hemicellulose lignin fraction with water or distillate uh, 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 the ethanol, um, to, uh, then the lignin gets precipitated. So this is this is how it works, and it is, it is just dried afterwards, and and um, then you get the, the pure lignin. And there, there's a second second step to get to this kind of lignin because the, the cellulose has a remaining of about five to ten percent lignin bound and after saccharification this is also precipitated and so you can pull these two fractions to the lignin fraction. I hope this answers the question. Yes, Piotr is just responding yeah that that's clear for him and, and thank he's thanking you. Uh, uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, you're very welcome. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, um, yeah, uh, Jochen, thank you very much uh, yeah. for your presentation. And then we will give now the the, the yeah. Bye.